I currently work in the outdoor power equipment industry, and one of the things I hear pretty often is a uh, you know, customer will come in and says, uh, my trimmer head's broke, it's not putting out any line when I tap it. Uh, more often than not, it's not broken, it's just not threaded properly. So I'm going to show you how to probably thread a uh, steel commercial head. I've got the FS90 here with the AutoCut 25-2. So let's get to it. Just for demonstration purposes in this video, I'm going to go ahead and take my head off. And this is also what you would do if you were replacing the whole head. Um, so your machine should have come with a pin, which is like this one. And if you don't have a pin handy, a screwdriver or anything will uh, work. But you're going to stick it in, I'm going to slot right there, and then at two points that will lock that in. Uh, from here, this is reverse threaded, so it is righty loosey, lefty tidy. So go ahead and just thread it on and off. All right, so there's our head, and also you don't have to take this piece off. If it's upside down, it'll just stay on. But just uh, I'm set that aside for now. All right, I've got two heads here. Just another thing to look for. Uh, this is a newer head, older head. But you want to check to see if there's any wear up here on that top plate. You know, this one's still good. This one, you can see it's got wear on it. That means I need to replace my spool. Uh, as you use your machine and bump the line out, the spool will wear down. And as it wears down, it'll eventually get to the point to where when you bump it, it'll start grinding away at the top plate, uh, wearing it out. And if you keep going, it'll wear out these tabs on the head itself, and you'll just have to pick up a whole new head. So if you start seeing wear up here, Go ahead and get a new spool, or else you'll end up having to get a new spool and top plate. Uh, I think the top plate's like 12 bucks, so I mean, 12 bucks that you don't need to spend. Something to be aware of. I right, got my head here. There's two tabs, one here and 100 degrees on the other side. So if they're older, you can get them out with your finger. But I went rock climbing this morning, and my hands are pretty much destroyed. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and just press down. On that tab, It'll pop out, and the same on the other side, and that top plate, come right off. All right, so if you're out of line, you're not going to see that, but pretty much let me, tabs. Also, that's why these eyelets are here, so you can put the line in there, that way, you know, after you spool it, it's not going to bird's nest. But one thing to look for, um, you can take your head off this, will actually probably be seated down. If you look down in there, this spool has tabs on it, and the head has two tabs up off the back of it, one here, one here. And the tabs on the spool actually rest underneath. There's a spring in there, so it'll come out. So here, I've got the tabs locked, and if you turn it, and it'll pop right out. See the spring there? And you can see a little better. There's one of those tabs. The other one, a little dirt in there. And these are what go underneath when you go to reinstall it and lock it in place. All right, also, when you're doing this, you don't want to lose these metal pieces. These eyelets can get lost. Um, you know, I sell quite a few of those. Right, so let me go ahead and unthread this guy. I'm not going to do this completely by the book. Uh, the book's going to show, you know, stick a line in on one side, and then stick a line in on that side. That's not the way I do it. I find that to be kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to demonstrate the way I uh, line my heads. And I've already got my line cut. You know, it says per the book, you can fit uh, about 16 and a half feet per line. So a total of like 33 feet in here. Uh, I don't put that much in. I find it's easier just to put a little bit less. So I got mine right at about uh, 12 and a half feet. But so the way I do it, you get your spool, your line, have them both in the same hand. What you're going to do is put them into those holes. All right, so I got them fed in there. All right, like we just said earlier, bring it back over on itself, like that. Kind of pull it snug so it gets that nice crease in there. I stick my finger down in there and kind of press it in. And the way I do it, 
And the way I recommend other people do it is hold the two lines with uh, you know, whichever is your dominant hand with your off hand. Instead of wrapping or moving the line, I turn the spool with my left. So I'm actually just going to start doing this. And remember, don't put it in there too tight or else it'll start welding itself together. Now, as you start doing it, you'll notice that I'm actually got them kind of twisted here. That will happen. I'll kind of untwist them and keep going. I know. Once you get to this point, what you're going to do is use those two eyelets. Like I kind of said earlier, that's what here they're here for. Stick one of your lines up in that one, and one of them up in the other. If you're a commercial guy, uh, it's, it'll definitely benefit you to have a couple of already spooled up heads on your truck. That way, you know, if you're out on the job doing a lawn and you run out of line, you don't have to stop and re-thread a head. Grab a spool that's already filled, stick it in your machine, keep going. Uh, that way, you know, at night, you know, when you're not on the job, you can go ahead and spool up a couple, leave them on your truck. Also, with another thing is this is 95 thousandths. No, this is what comes standard in a new head. If you put thicker line in here, you won't be able to fit quite as much. So that 12 and a half feet like I stuck in here just now, you know, take that down because you're not going to be able to fit all of it in here. And if you use narrower stuff, you can put more. So from here, we're going to reinstall it into the case. Remember, we've got those tabs. We're going to press it down against the spring, twist it, and have it resting on those tabs to hold it in place. And you want to... You don't have to, but it's easier in this step if you line these eyelets up with these eyelets. I'm going to drop it down in there, see where I'm at. All right, there she is. From here, just pull them out, stick them in the metal eyelets. Take the cover back on. Notice the spool's still down because it's stuck under that spring. Those tabs are held in place. So if you just pull these out, it'll pop in and you're good to go. Reinstall the head upside down, kind of give you a better view of what you're working with. So remember this piece that came off earlier? Go ahead and toss that on there. If you did take it off, if not, don't worry about it. All right, then we've got our head and our pin. So come in from the back side with the pin. Drop the head on her. Remember, it's reverse threaded, so we'll go to the left. Hope this video helped you out. Um, you know, it's a pretty common thing I get asked, so I you know, just thought I'd make this. Go on YouTube, search it. You know, hopefully you can uh, help yourself, and that way you don't have to take a trip to the uh, lawnmower shop to uh, you know, have those guys help you out. Uh, save you some gas money and some time. Um, I'll be making some more videos like these in the future. Uh, you know, I've got some equipment. I'll probably be doing the basics, but uh, if there's something specific you'd like to, you know, have reviewed or gone over, uh, the brands that I have partial access to are Boda, John Deere, uh, Steel, Echo, Honda mowers and generators, things like that. Uh, so, you know, if you have a specific thing you're looking for, let me know, and uh, I'll try to get my hands on it and uh, review it or show you how to safely operate it. Um, you know, whatever it is. But have a good one, humans.